We made a video a little while ago titled, Why Non-Ionizing Radiation is Dangerous. That explains the mechanism, what's going on in the body when you're getting radiated by various sources, whether it's Wi-Fi, Alexa, Bluetooth, random cell towers, even magnetic radiation. This is about what's actually happening in your different bodily systems, why it's dangerous. And the scariest part about this isn't just the health effects, it's being used as part of the psychological warfare operation being enacted on the American public to move us towards some type of global communism. Uh, so this information is from a document that I believe was declassified titled Defense Intelligence Agency Biological Effects of Electromagnetic Radiation. And it's not that long, it's only about 30 pages. You can Google this, read it yourself, and it discusses the biological effects of electromagnetic radiation in the radio and microwave ranges. So this isn't anything crazy, this is what we're being exposed to on a daily basis. And the information reported in the study has been drawn from scientific, medical, and military journals, intelligence reports, magazines, news items, books, and other publications. Uh, you know, this is actually a video script that I had written up a while ago. It was just kind of long and drawn out and I didn't really want to do it. And if you do want to support me and also protect yourself from radio frequency radiation, which is the biggest problem for most people, check out wifishielding.com. Uh, we have bed canopies available, which I'll show you at the end of this video if you stick around. And we will have the shielding clothing, which I wear at all times, available later this week. So we'll start with the quick crazy stuff. Sounds and possibly even words which appear to be originating intracranially can be induced by signal modulation at very low average power densities. So yeah, there are some crazy people out there, but what the government also likes to do is blast people with radiation, call them schizophrenic, uh, which is why I sleep in a metal box. Animal experiments reported in the open literature have demonstrated the use of low-level microwave signals to produce death by heart seizure or neurological pathologies resulting from breaching of the blood-brain area. So they can also fry your heart and brain. Soviet and Eastern European scientists believe that biological side effects occur at power densities that are too low to produce obvious thermal effects. And I think in a that video I did a while ago, I showed a Soviet Russia document explaining that pregnant women shouldn't be exposed to any cell phones at all for any duration of the pregnancy. So uh, there is some objective research that has been done. It just requires a lot of digging to find it. The central nervous system is first because those are the symptoms people suffer from the most. Headaches, fatigue, perspiring, dizziness, menstrual disorder, irritability, agitation, tension, drowsiness, sleeplessness, depression, anxiety, forgetfulness, and lack of concentration. And I have so many specific memories from working in New York City, uh, which is an incredibly high EMF environment, suffering from a bunch of these. And I've probably had all of them at one point or another. So histological examination of the cerebral cortex cells from rats exposed to UHF ultra high frequencies revealed the onset of sclerosis and the formation of vacuoles in some of the cells. That's stiffening of the nerve tissue and diseased holes. And ultra high frequencies are what you're being exposed to with your smart meter, router, Amazon devices, cell phone, microwave, every single day. Your brain is literally getting cooked. And if anyone tells you that non-ionizing radiation is safe, you should be laughing in their face as their brain looks like some Swiss cheese or it doesn't and they want your brain to look like Swiss cheese. Uh, so uh, we'll move on to the digestive system as people also suffer from gut issues just as commonly as brain issues. A number of alterations in the function of the gastrointestinal system were observed. Reportedly, exposures of subjects working for long periods of time in the presence of low intensity waves resulted in numerous disorders including dyspeptic, uh, like heartburn, edema of the gums, bleeding gums, alteration of the gastric acidity, and reduction of the tonus and evacuator functions of the stomach. Uh, that basically means low stomach acidity and low gut motility, everything's getting stuck. There are two other side effects that lead to dysbiosis, aka gut issues. 
One is the impairment of the digestive organs, such as the liver and pancreas, from radiation-induced oxidative stress. The other is the impaired carbohydrate metabolism and blood sugar irregularities that can cause overconsumption of food. Uh, and when you have impaired organ function and you eat too much, that is a recipe for candida, SIBO, long-term gut issues that take at least months to years to correct if you know what you're doing. Uh, so far, our brains are Swiss cheese and we have a fungal demon growing in our guts. What's next? Reproductive system, and to put it not so lightly, your balls won't work and your kids will probably be deformed. Uh, so the fertility of female white mice was investigated. Conception in 58 control animals was 94%, but only 75% in irradiated animals. Long-term non-thermal microwave irradiation of male mice evoked changes in the testes. Subsequent mating of the animals resulted in reduction in the size of the litters. Female white mice were irradiated twice daily for one hour with low intensity up to the 18th day of pregnancy. There were stillbirths, a significant number of weak newborn, and general retardation of body weight gain and growth. And you know, I wonder if I could do some sort of Freedom of Information Act and get the government to publish statistics of actual miscarriages because I'm sure if we had legitimate data from like 1950 to now, people would be freaking out. Our great grandparents used to have eight, nine, 10, 12 kids and now we can't even have one. I mean, I think I've touched on this in the past in, in several miscarriage videos. Uh, so we got cheese brains, candida guts, soy boy balls, what could be worse? Your blood will become a battlefield. Effects of electromagnetic irradiation on the blood include biochemical variations, effects on blood cells, changes in coagulation, and alterations in the blood forming system. One study involved the observation of several thousand persons working in microwave irradiated workshops, as well as animal experiments. In the human subjects, three kinds of damage were found. So I didn't have enough room to put those three on here, but number one is lymphocytosis and monocytosis, basically high amounts of white blood cells indicating an immune response while they were in the irradiated workshops. Two is granulocytopenia, monocytosis, and eosinophilia, frequently high amount of white blood cells again, but now we have eosinophilia, which are disease-fighting white blood cells, and granulocytopenia, which is typically seen in bone marrow disease or chemotherapy, indicating a much higher level of immune response. And then we have moderate neutrophilia. Neutrophils are another type of white blood cell, and they are seen here irregularly high. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I've ever said half of those words before, but it's pretty easy to understand from an objective perspective that something bad is happening in the body from an immune system perspective when we are in a high radiation environment. So on to the animal studies. Long-term exposure in rats reportedly reduced the iron and copper content in the blood and muscle with a concurrent increase of iron in the liver. And this could easily be why people get iron overload so easily on a carnivore diet. High iron plus low copper plus high Wi-Fi exposure turns your liver into a literal block of iron. Uh, so the degree of changes in the blood could be correlated with exposure and or duration of working period. And this determination was based on the relative changes as a function of period of employment, uh, which was felt to indicate a cumulative effect of microwaves in the human body. And from this we see that the body is clearly responding negatively to these non-ionizing fields in the form of chronic inflammation. So if we know radiation is harmful, it's pretty obvious that the level of radiation, the duration of exposure, you know, will indicate the level of damage caused to the person. The question is, how much is the body damaged from relative amounts? I mean, there's very intelligent people probably working for the government higher up that can give you specific numeric values, but I am not smart enough to figure that out. You know, is our development inhibited? Do we have higher risks of cancer? Without a doubt, 100%, it's just, we, we can't measure it accurately enough to, to explain it to the layman and show them physical data about how harmful it is. 
Uh, so we got cheese brains, candida guts, soy boy balls, uh, the battle in our blood, and uh, oh yeah, your heart might explode. Changes in the cardiovascular system. Very obvious symptoms to have are blood pressure variation, cardiac arrhythmias. I mean, you know, if your heart's beating out of your chest, you're going to notice. Also included are reports of intraventricular and intraatrial conduction, diffuse cardiac muscle changes, and ventricular extracystal, extracystal, I don't fucking know. All of these things are basically relating to heartbeat irregularities. Uh, so a comparison of a group of engineers and administrative officials who were exposed to microwaves for a period of years and an unexposed control group revealed a significantly higher incidence of coronary disease, hypertension, and disturbances of lipid metabolism among the exposed individuals. So it was concluded that microwaves may act as a nonspecific factor which interferes with adaption to unfavorable influences. Exposure may promote an earlier onset of cardiovascular disease in susceptible individuals, aka we are cooking you and won't admit it. Go figure. Personnel exposed to microwave radiation below thermal levels experience more neurological, cardiovascular, and hemodynamic disturbances than their unexposed counterparts. Uh, some of the cardiac and circulatory effects attributed to exposure include bradycardia, hypotension, and changes in EKG indexes. Uh, so bradycardia is a slow heart rate, hypotension is low blood pressure, and EKG indexes is uh, an electrocardiogram uh, which relates back to the heartbeat irregularities. Next up is cells. Non-thermal effects on subcellular structures include the formation of binuclear cells and irregular thickening of the nuclear membrane. Invagination of the cytoplasm in the nucleus has been observed. <laughs> Invagination sounds like something I want to do, but it actually just means turning something inside out. Uh, and if a cell gets turned inside out, yeah, that's not good. Uh, frequently accompanied by breaks in the nuclear membrane, and that simply means non-ionizing radiation is destroying your cells, and the available seem to indicate that the magnitude of these effects is frequency dependent. So the liver cells of rats exposed for three hours show damage to the various structures, the mitochondria became swollen and ruptured, and the cellular reactions were largely the same as those observed after the action of many other environmental factors. So uh, it, it was frequency dependent, you know, how much radiation, how long did they do it for, and um, each different component of the cell reacted differently. Uh, so when I say that we get cooked like chickens in microwaves, uh, I mean our cells are getting blasted and destroyed. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. I feel like I should have put on a dress shirt, but there is definitely no article of clothing that would live up to this level of information. Uh, so if you guys could go to frank com to support me where you will find Wi-Fi shielding. Again, oh, let me show you the canopy because you guys stuck around. So this room in my house is where I have my computer and everything for work. Uh, my computer is actually hardwired and surrounded by a bed canopy. I also sleep in a bed canopy. And although this is you know, quite a bit of silver fabric, therefore it's a several hundred dollar investment. Having one of these in my living space and sleeping space is the most important thing. And then when I go out throughout the day, I just wear the protective clothing and this will effectively reduce your overall exposure to radiation damage upwards of 70, 80, 90% dependent on how uh, serious you are about it, putting your phone on airplane mode, that type of stuff too. Uh, so again, thank you guys for joining me. You know, drop a like on the video. Uh, I, I forgot to mention earlier in the video that we do have the channel membership now available on the community page. You can read a little bit about that, um, but maybe I'll just talk about that tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.